Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Sunday, it is April the 17th. It is approximately 10.30 in the morning. I had a little bit of time available, free time this morning. And I thought we could look at uh, three strong energy buys. But before we get into the um, three strong energy buys that I wanna discuss with you and talk about, uh, what we uh, first wanna do is a little bit of education. And what I'm going to do specifically here is tap into um, my Twitter buddy, the Two Cent Oil Baron. Uh, by the way, uh, you should probably change your handle now to the Two Million Dollar Oil Baron. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, your energy picks have certainly been good, and good luck going forward too. But um, the Two Cent Oil Baron on uh, Twitter. By the way, if you want to uh, follow Two Cent Oil Baron on Twitter, uh, you probably would be uh, easier served to look up Two Cent Oil Baron as opposed to A V G J A N E E X P two. Uh, but anyway, uh, Two Cent Oil Baron uh, focuses on P ratios. And um, what specifically is applicable here are uh, a number of different PE ratios with the exclusion of debt equity, for example. And uh, what I thought to do was just quickly run through some of these and, and kind of uh, share with you what they mean. I know the, that the majority of you by far are like astute, smart, super intelligent investors and you know, maybe this is old hat to you and you know all this kind of stuff, but there are a few people among us who are new to this and may not be as familiar with it as some of the others. So let's look at this quickly. And then after that, we're going to look at three potential energy buyers. So first, just by way of a little disclaimer, some ratios are facts based on historical reporting, for instance, the most recent quarter trading 12 months or whatever. Other ratios are modeled based on expectations, for example, forward PE. The reason why is because we have to estimate the uh, future or forward earnings per share, whilst the actual PE ratio, as an example, for valuing the company is something we can use based on the current share price relative to its earnings. In other words, historically, we know that to be correct. Forward PE divides the current share price of the company by the estimated future. That's why I'm saying it's modeling uh, earnings per share. The price to cash flow which should not be confused with free cash flow, which uh, is a different thing altogether, but the price to cash flow ratio is a multiple that's really useful and works well for companies that have large non-cash expenses, such as depreciation. The reason why that's important is because depreciation is a um, really cool entry for the company in terms of uh, you know, uh, reducing its tax liabilities, for instance, uh, unfortunately also might reduce its earnings from a pure income statement point of view but it's not a balance sheet entry because it doesn't actually cost you any cash. Uh, it's just a legitimate legal write-off as you depreciate assets. As we saw uh, over the past few, um, a couple of years or so, as Occidental was selling some of its assets, it also had to write down depreciation at the same time because an asset might have been on the books for a billion dollars and they sold it for 750 million, which means they had to write off $250 million in depreciation. Price to book measures the market valuation of the company relative to its book value. That one's kind of easy. Same with price to sales. It shows the company's market cap divided by the company's sales for the previous 12 months. So trailing 12 months. So in other words, um, that one is uh, factual as well. And EPS growth refers to the positive change between earnings per share values reported by the company. So EPS, earnings per share, and then growth. So um, let's look at a couple of companies that... Um, according to Zacks, are strong energy buys right now. The first one, of course, is the one we are most familiar with. So I'm going to go fast on this one, but this is Occidental Petroleum. The consensus estimate for the current year earnings increasing 105.2% over the past 60 days. Uh, you know, if you're a day trader or a speculator, you might say, I'm going to get into Oxy. Uh, they're going to report their Q1 earnings coming up soon. And when, once they've reported their uh, Q1 earnings, uh, maybe there's an uptick for me, I'll, I'll exit and get out. Of course, there are other ways to, to trade this as well in, in terms of an option play. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go into any detail. Uh, all I can tell you is that right now, uh, Zax has Occidental ranked number one as a strong buy. Not number one of all companies. It's just ranked number one. They have a number of different companies ranked number one. Oxy has a PEG ratio. So PE, price earnings, and G, growth of 0.22 compared with 0.7 for the industry. And the company possesses a growth score of B. So it's pretty good numbers. A couple of little red circles here, and uh, this is not a big deal, but I do need to point it out because we always need to uh, be aware 
uh, of risk and certainly uh, practice risk mitigation because we want to ensure that we preserve our wealth and preserve our capital. And remember Warren Buffett's rules. Rule number one is don't lose money. And rule number two is never forget rule number one. A couple of things about Oxy, which is interesting right now, if you're thinking of opening a position in Occidental, it's got a PE ratio of almost 30. Uh, as a general rule, the S&P 500 is uh, tracking along at around 15, which means based on the PE ratio only as a single metric or benchmark, uh, P, the PE ratio for Oxy is two times higher than the sort of market average. Uh, and, I, and I mean that in a sort of generic sense, and of course it's one ratio, but Occidental, uh, based on its current price, is actually, relatively speaking, based on the PE ratio, expensive. The other thing that's interesting here to note is that the short interest, which uh, up until recently was sitting at around three, three and a half percent, is now up to 6% at the bottom of your screen there. Um, Oxy has some legs, uh, it can run, and it should have a phenomenal first quarter, uh, but you need to be aware of the risk factors as you make your investments. A quick value and valuation analysis. I'm not going to look at the actual uh, little charts and numbers over here, but I do want to read this little piece here because Oxy is in the oil, gas, and consumable fuels industry, and it has positive earnings. The PEG, so the price earnings growth ratio for the trading 12 months, the PE, the price earnings ratio, and the price to book are the most appropriate valuation measures. Price to sales is less instructive than PEG or PE since the company has positive earnings. Therefore, Oxy seems inex inexpensive with a PEG ratio of 1.2, which is below oil, gas, and consumable fuel industry median, PEG of 1.53. Although their price earnings ratio is 28 above the industry median of 15, as I said just a minute ago. Next one, Westlake Corporation. Now, I'm not familiar with Westlake, but I found Westlake as a Zach's strong buy as well. And Zach's consensus estimate for the current year earnings increases 22.4% over the last 60 days. So um, Westlake uh, Corporation is certainly, by the way, the ticker symbol is WLK in case you missed it up at the top here. Westlake WLK. Um, Westlake is certainly looking as if it's on a little bullish run. Westlake has a PEG of 0 0.2 compared to 0 0.3 for the industry and possesses a growth score of B, similar to Occidental Petroleum. A quick look at Westlake's uh, snapshot here. Uh, the company's PE ratio is only eight. Now, if you're using the PE ratio as your uh, sort of starting point, this is super cheap because unlike Oxy, which is at double the uh, industry median, um, Westlake is at half. So uh, arguably, the industry is two times more expensive than Westlake based on the PE ratio. The short interest has also crept up a little bit, 4%, but unlike Oxy, the institutional ownership is only 26%, 27%, so quite low. Like Oxy, it's also trading very close to its 52-week high. Uh, current price, $122 per share, and the 52-week high, $127 per share. Because Westlake is in the chemicals industry and has positive earnings, the PE and price-to-book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. The price-to-sales ratio is less instructive than the PE since the company has positive earnings, right? Same as Oxy. Therefore, Westlake seems inexpensive with a PE value of only eight below the chemical industry median of 17. There's my guideline again, sort of around 15 or so. If it's below 15, it's interesting. If it's above 15, based on PE alone, it looks to be expensive. Another one, Eco Petrol SA. This integrated oil and gas company carries a ZAC rank of number one, and its current year earnings have also increased 52.8% over the last 60 days. So uh, once again, this is a company I'm not intimately familiar with. Uh, from memory, I think Eco Petrol is headquartered in Colombia. And um, we can take a look here and see that Eco Petrol has a PEG ratio of 0.12% uh, 0 0.12 compared to 0 0.23 for the industry, and also has a growth score of B, similar to Occidental and Westlake. A quick snapshot here of Eco Petrol uh, in terms of its summary. And we can see the PE ratio of nine, which as I said a minute ago, as it related to Westlake, is around half of the industry median. So uh, it's kind of like uh, half the price if you base it on PE ratio alone. It's also trading near its 52 week high. In fact, it's right there or thereabouts. 19 bucks 65 was closing on Friday. And the short interest also 4%. I notice on most of the energy stocks, the uh, short interest 
um, ratio uh, or percentage of the float outstanding has been creeping up little by little by little. And um, that's one of the reasons why is because energy has been on such a huge run. Uh, a number of people are slowly stepping in to say, I'm going to short this because it has to pull back. So these are things we need to pay attention to and be aware of as we go. Because EC is in the oil, gas, and consumable fuels industry, similar to Occidental, and it has positive earnings, similar to Occidental, the PE and price to book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. Price to sales is less instructive than PE because the company has positive earnings. So now I've repeated that three times. You can ignore the price to sales ratio, you know, unless uh, you find it interesting from an academic point of view. As a general rule, you can ignore the price to sales ratio as being less instructive for any company that has positive earnings. So guys, that's a quick snapshot of you, uh, for you of three uh, energy buys. Uh, of course, most of you uh, already know by now that I hold a substantial position in Occidental Petroleum. So that's a hold for me. I'm not sure right now if I, if I would necessarily open a new position in Westlake or EcoPetrol. I have some uh, other uh, sort of speculative buys that I've parked a little bit of cash in like Petrobras, for example. Uh, which is one of my newer positions. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, as usual, if you like my videos, please subscribe. But more importantly, uh, take time to comment. And let me know what you think um, of these three or any others. Maybe you have a, a, a couple of um, uh, other energy related companies that you think are a uh, strong buy right now, regardless of what Zacks says. Um, the other amusing thing about that is that uh, some people view Zacks uh, almost the same way some people view Jim Cramer. If he says buy, then you should run away and sell. Uh, and if you know if they say uh, sell, then uh, you should look at it and do a little bit of due diligence because it's potentially a buy. Uh, so guys, on that note, this is Mr. Roxy saying uh, goodbye for now. Have a great Sunday, wherever you may be in the world. Uh, stay safe, stay out of, out of trouble, be kind to people, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.